We are live, everybody, on the brand new MLB The Show 18. How's it going, everybody? My name is Mr. Hurricane. Good to see you all today. Just getting everything set up here for today's Twins franchise off-season live stream. Forgot to get some music going here, but we're good to go now. Anyway, today, of course is a big day for the twins franchise with us making our way to year three and doing so in the brand new version of the show thanks to you to your saves the game or our series is far from over got my copy right here and i am ready to get us into the off season i've been watching some content today to get more familiar with how the mode works this year and just what has changed Oh, we got some on times in the comments. Yes, let's change things. Let's change the narrative, not late. What song is this? It's called Sugar in the YouTube audio library. But this is what franchise mode looks like now, and it's a much slicker appearance. The menus are, they're nicer, and it's a lot easier to get from phase to phase, which phases are the new addition in franchise this year, which really is just optimizing the existing formula. There is logic improved this year for, I think, trades and retirements. And the main thing here is that it's a little bit easier to see what your tasks are and what you need to do within them. It's probably really good for a player like me who was very confused my first time I did an off season in here but it is very similar to MLB 17. Formula, there is logic improved here for, I think, trades. I don't want that playing, okay. How are you liking 18? I really haven't gotten a great chance to play a lot so far. I obviously, you know, the show is a pretty known formula. It's fun, I got into some games was doing some challenge of the week, was just trying different things out. I'll have more content coming out over the weekend. You know, it's the show. There's no real mystery to what MLB The Show is from year to year. It's a very solid baseball game. The narrative is usually about whether the game took great strides or not, and I'm not quite sure yet if it took a lot of major strides. I do like the Road to the Show changes a lot. I haven't gotten to play much Road to the Show yet. Still debating if I want to do a brand new player or continue Jordan Starks. I'll probably do another Jordan Starks video here on MLB 18 and then kind of go from there. I have not gotten into Diamond Dynasty. Just some basic gameplay and uh, franchise. So thank you all for joining me today here on YouTube. This is my first piece of content of MLB 18 and there will surely be a lot more to come between this channel and my second channel, Mr. Hurricane LP, where I'll be doing Road to the Show and maybe some sort of franchise rebuild or something like that. I thought about doing a fantasy draft series, but over here, it's going to be all about the Twins franchise, continuing things and keeping the series fun and today getting into the offseason. Remember that there are three separate categories. If you forget, don't see one of them, you'll lose a lot of players. Yeah, there are a lot of phases in free agency and the offseason in general, but I think it does a pretty good job this year of telling you what is next and not making you confused. I was watching the developer stream earlier that did uh, a pretty good job of showing what they've improved. I'm going to make a second save file just in case anything crazy were to happen. But we are good to go to start getting into this. We are right at the end of the regular season. So we'll start simming the playoffs and then make our way to the main event, of course. What's the plan regarding Starks? I don't know right now. I still want to play a little bit with him, but I really liked what they've done this year with uh, Road to the Show and making it so it was uh, you basically now in Road to the Show, you don't get training points based on how well you play. You, when you play, your ratings adjust automatically. So say you hit a right-handed hitter for a home run, those ratings that go along with that action are going to go up. So you'll improve your power versus right-handed hitters and maybe things like plate vision. So it's a lot more sensible RPG system to me, but then I have Jordan Starks who's already an 89 overall 
and uh, I won't be able to build him up again. JR Battle as a pitcher. I thought about doing Marquise Walker as a pitcher. Make him like a, a knuckleballer or something. He's not the doesn't have the strongest arm, so you'd have to be kind of a, a movement pitcher. But we're just simming along here with the postseason day by day. Looks like we have our pennant chases here with the Giants making it to the World Series against the Toronto Blue Jays. Who saw that one coming? When does the World Series start? San Francisco takes the first two games, the first three. Toronto's not done. Now they are. Giants win the World Series. I want to see what their lineup looks like, though. What are the Giants working with this year? All these menus are changed. They look a lot nicer. I will give uh, them that credit. The Giants, though. Here is their current team. A lot of familiar names. Lots of high potential players on this team, too. Good year for the Giants. I forget who won in the first season. Upgrading takes a lot of time. For the most part, you don't even get one rating up. Yeah, like not, you're not going to get just like plus one contact for one hit. But that's the whole idea. If you want to get better at hitting, you know, for power against righties, you need to show that you can do it. So the Giants are World Series champions, and for us, we obviously were just outside of the postseason going 84 and 78. We actually reached our yearly goal of finishing over 500. That's a 24 game improvement is really good. And I hope that next year we have a chance to actually make it to the playoffs. We had a chance this year, but we have to uh, obviously get it done. So the Dodgers won it in year one. After we traded Brian Dozier to them, now the Giants. So I feel bad for anybody else in that division that's trying to uh, win because you have two World Series champions the last two years. But now that the postseason is over, I guess I can check on postseason stats. But yeah, these menus are so much cleaner. I'm glad I waited, especially because the retirement logic is so much more improved now. Let's go to stats for was league leaders. Here is who starred in the playoffs. Ooh, DJ LeMahieu. I guess he probably only played a handful of at-bats. But uh, the Giants. Joe Panic hit 362 with three home runs. Yeah, isn't this clean? I'm impressed. Yes, I did import my team. I uh, brought over my Twins franchise from MLB 17. Will we see Maxwell Fowler next year? Absolutely. We'll have him at spring training, and I'm hoping to have him in the starting rotation this time. Who hit some home runs in the postseason? Five for Buster Posey. Five for Addison Russell. 16 RBIs for Joe Panic. Quite impressive. How about ERA? Well, I guess it's going to be biased towards low innings. Madison Bubgarner. Complete game. Look at his numbers in the postseason. 3-0, 1.6 ERA, and 9.6 K per 9. That's elite. I had Mike Trout retire after year one before. Oh, we don't want anything like that happening. I hope I don't have any surprise retirements here, but I'm sure that the logic is far improved for us. So here was our roster this year. We definitely outperformed our expectations. We have a lot of high potential players now in this organization we've made a lot happen in a very short amount of time look at all those b potential players and that's not including the rookies i drafted which none of them had a b potential a lot of people were knocking that draft class i had so let's go past the postseason now your contract with your farm director has ended you will need to re-sign him or hire a replacement for the end of the offseason all right an off-season is about to begin. Five days to negotiate contracts with players who do not have contracts for next year. Or they'll become free agents. We also have five days to tender qualifying offers. Is that like their franchise tag? Or actually, it probably functions more like the transition tag. But you know what I mean. View retired players. 
Irvin Santana, AJ Ellis, and Matt Belial have retired. So no major surprises there. I wasn't really looking to bring back Irvin Santana, so he does retire. I had someone tell me a long time ago that Justin O'Connor, the catcher I traded for, because he had a torn Achilles as like a young player, that he would have retired. And I wonder if that's been changed now because obviously he's good to go. And here are the rest of the retirements. I wish I could sort it by overall and just look at it from that way. Man, lots of free agents. If you tender a qualifying offer and a player signs, you get a pick at the end of round one. Okay. No uh, Hall of Fame inductees this year. I guess there are no major retirements. So, here is another new menu with our exclusive free agents. And by the way, for some reason, there were a couple errors when this was imported. So, a few names are off. This is supposed to be Glenn Perkins. Instead, it's Adam McDonough. So I'll have to go back and figure out who everybody is. I can go to MLB 17 and do that. But there are some weird ones here. Not many, but there are a couple that stand out. Like, I have no idea here. I have no clue who Andy Jones is. But I'll have to go find out. All right, so I have my exclusive negotiations. Before free agency begins, you have the opportunity to exclusively negotiate new contracts with your veterans, and you'll lose them if you don't do it, essentially. All right. So these are our free agents then. I think this is Brian Pena, and he got messed up in here as well. Glenn Perkins retired, so he's not an MLB 18, but shouldn't it have known him from my franchise? Like, I thought about that, but it was still kind of an interesting reason for that to happen. Okay, so if we start with our top players up here... We have Yunel Escobar, who was a major surprise for us last season, and he hit over 300. He was our best contact hitter. He ended up with 13 home runs, 51 RBIs. I really enjoyed playing with him, and I'd love to bring him back for another season. Last year, I gave him, I think, three and a half to four million dollars, and this year, maybe it takes a little bit more. Yeah, it's going to. I think one year, 3.8 would be fair. Jesse Chavez, he was pretty solid for us as well, but he is getting older and we're trying to make room for some young pitchers in our organization. I don't think I'm going to look to bring back Jesse Chavez right now. So I don't want to make any kind of an offer. I'm not sure if there's a way to say no like you can on Madden. Uh, Brandon Phillips... He was, you know, okay. He had some really rough stretches, but then turned it on late. I like Phillips, but I think I'll also let him test. We're going to have some room this year to bring in some really good players, potentially. So I'm not going to prioritize a bunch of old players, but I will prioritize Yunel Escobar for how good he was. Sign Pedro Alvarez. I'll be looking for some power for sure. And if Chris Davis hits the market, I'll really want to take a look there. Change role in negotiations. Yeah, that's one of the important ones if you're going to make an offer. Uh, Joe Maurer, I wouldn't mind having him on the team again. But actually, this is going to be pretty cheap more than likely. Platoon player. Probably, probably actually depth, honestly. But I'll say platoon. And for Escobar, platoon for him, I think, is about right. Hector Santiago, we'll let him go. Glenn Perkins, we're going to let him go. 
Eduardo Escobar. I still like Escobar. He is now 30 years old. But how much is he looking for? Three to four million dollars. Go after Harper if he's there. I'll have to be smart with my money because consider us in Minnesota. We're not going to have the highest budget. So signing a Bryce Harper would make things very tough elsewhere. Yes, this does carry over your progress from MLB 17. It's year-to-year -year saves, and they've had this for a few different years now. Tom Wilhelmson, probably a one-year offer. I'm not trying to get any of these pitchers for, uh, you know, a serious amount of time. I can actually probably go a little bit lower there. As long as he's in the bullpen, I think he'll be pretty happy with uh, half mil. I was wondering if you could give me any tips on re-signing players in Madden 18, like how to decide what to pay and what bonus and signing money. Um, really in Madden, I tend to be pretty frugal unless a player is really good and he's just irreplaceable. So I tend to give them what they want and if I'm going to raise the offer, it's going to be with the signing bonuses. But you really got to manage your funds, because if you run out, you're going to be in some trouble. What does platoon mean? Kind of like um, they'll play every now and then. Not going to be every day, but they'll have somewhat of a role. Think of him as like a bench player in the NBA, as long as he's part of the rotation. John Jay. I think I'll let him test. I like Jay, but I don't want to just bring back all of these older players. Um, Peña was pretty good for us last year, but I'll let him test and see what we have in the organization. So I really didn't want to uh, sign any of those other players. It's set to manual, so it shouldn't do anything that's out of my uh, control here, my choices. Farm director, we have to sign somebody here, and I want to get you know the best one I can. Luis Dominguez, attribute grade A, plus two to stealing, plus one speed, plus three power. We could certainly use some power here. Let's make an offer. $1.4 million a year, nothing too major. I think he'll want a little bit larger offer though. I'm looking at the, uh, there we go. See that whole circle got filled. I don't want to fill it entirely here, but most of the way for sure. What did I change? What did I do wrong? Well, I guess. Okay. Yeah, we'll see about potential trades this year. I'm not sure all what I plan to do with this team. I want to see how much money we have to spend and who hits the open market first. So let's sim one day and see if we get any uh, deals done. Does that not work? I'm trying to do sim through date. Oh, I have to go to November, I think, to do it. And, okay, Luis Dominguez is going to the Diamondbacks instead. So we have to make a new offer then. The new farm director. I would like to focus on offense, considering it was so weak for us last year. Try to go for a guy with plate discipline. Pitching clutch, plate vision, speed, drag bunting. Yeah, I do have to upgrade at closer this year. That's one of the things I need to do. There are so many names here to pick from. There are too many. 
Plate vision, stamina, bunting, and arm accuracy. Vincent McBeth might be an option for us. He has no negatives. There are like too many options here. All right, so who should we hire then? And if you want to see who I already had as my uh, coaching staff, review staff, Henry Wright is our manager, then Mark Silva. Not many negatives here. We have A attribute grades across the board. Yeah, I'll be doing a shorter off-season video, especially because I'll probably do some stuff after the stream is over. Oh, wow, that's a nice manager contract right there. I like the contact boost here. Jimmy Joseph. This one would only knock down our stealing, but it would improve our batting and pitching clutch plus our contact. What do we think here? Nothing that knocks down plate vision or anything like that. Right now, Macbeth is one of the safer options, I think. He's 38 years old, plus two plate vision, plus one stamina and arm accuracy, and he would be looking for 880 a year. I think he's a pretty good option. However, that might not get it done. All right, hopefully that one works. Then for our exclusive negotiating, no one's accepted yet. Oh wait, I do believe that, uh, you know, Escobar must have accepted because he's not on that list anymore. So if I go to the calendar and transactions, we did re-sign Wilhelmsen, Escobar, Escobar, and Joe Maurer. Okay. So is there anybody else that I had to worry about for that window? I didn't make any offers to Chavez, Phillips, yeah, we're good to go. Vincent Macbeth has accepted the Twins offer. Okay, we have a new farm director. And it's the last day for qualifying offers. We're good there. No more to make. Now, when is it do I have to uh, renew my, like, prospects? When is that coming up? Is that after the uh, regular free agency? Did Glenn Perkins retire? No, but he did have a new name when I imported the file into MLB 18. Bryce Harper re-signed. Oh, I should see the big deals that were made. So Harper is not going to be on the open market then. Um, I'm hoping Chris Davis is. I could look for a corner outfielder with some power. Manny Machado got seven years, $217 million. DJ LeMayhew got signed. He would have been an option for us. Cody Allen. Wilson Ramos. Garrett Richards gets a big deal. Carlos Gomez is going to be a free agent. It's in February when free agency starts. 
advance one more day okay i just didn't want to make any mistakes here i didn't see the bryce harper one yet what did he just sign with the did he sign in real life or what the Nats here. Oh, there it is. 10 years, 310 million. Okay, I found it. It was in a sequential order, not by a team, so I got confused there. Good for him. How come they've been able to re-sign their players already? They're signing all their uh, prospects, but I can't. A 10-year contract is insane. Does that actually happen in baseball? It does. It does. And it happens to old players. Or it has happened. Didn't Albert Pujols sign a 10-year? Or was it like a 7? A trade for Reese Hoskins? I don't know about that. That'd be pretty expensive, I think. We have to give up a lot of prospects of our own to make it happen. You can once free agency starts. Okay, I guess they get two already. I can't. I'm just going to save the game quick. Alright, sim to free agency then. And here are the players you can lose in the Rule 5 draft. And this is where I made a big mistake last year. Because I ended up adding a lot of players to my 40-man roster. Even though they were like rookies. Because I didn't understand what made you eligible for the Rule 5 draft. So that was my biggest mistake of year 1. So this year, I'm just at risk of losing Andy Jones. I'm not actually sure who he is. I forget who he's supposed to be. So I could offer him a contract. I could, uh, here we go, the tender contracts. Most of those are pretty simple. And then it's the next stage of free agency. With uh, Paul Goldschmidt on the open market. Matt Harvey, Dallas Keuchel. I wouldn't mind bringing in a veteran pitcher to strengthen things. AJ Pollock, Charlie Blackman. There's a corner outfielder we could use, or we could move Blackman to a corner spot. That'd be fun. I have a lot of interest in Blackman. Uh, maybe Gomez coming back. Nelson Cruz with some power. That'd be fun. I'm going to come back to this after I make my other signings, though. I'm just getting a look at who's available. You know Goldie's going to get a major contract, though. That's going to be tough. The qualifying offer was made. Six years, $117 million. There was no offer, though, for Charlie Blackman. We'll get there. So let's start with our tender contracts here. These are the players that are under our team control. They don't become unrestricted free agents for a long time unless we just allow them to. So Gary Tadano. Oh wow, his renewable deal is going to be a million bucks a year. Or he'd like it to be. Wishful thinking. What would his morale like? He wants a mill. He's not getting a mill yet. I'm not really sure how much I'm supposed to give these players. This is another area where I was very confused last time. Um, like, I could get him to sign here for 80000 a year, but it would be a massive dip to his morale. 
So what do you guys think here? What would you do here? He's looking for a million a year. I don't want to give a million a year, but it would knock down his uh, morale a bit. So what would you do in this situation? Come back to him in a moment. Maxwell Fowler. That'll also be pretty expensive. So I'm seeing a lot of you saying 700 or 500. In that range. Okay. Maxwell wants a little bit uh, more than that even. 500k one year. We can always come back to it in a year and make another offer because he's going to be under team control for a long time. We'll go 600. That's pretty reasonable, right? Oh, and also his role. Probably depth at this point. I, I think he'll be the AAA ace. Let's make that offer. And then for Max, for his morale, he wants one point five million. Overall, his morale is satisfied. I think he's going to be in our rotation this year, so that's going to improve his morale. So we could make a $1 million offer here for Maxwell Fowler. Steven Gonzalez, again looking at the rotation with him, he has two more renewable years. Thank you for the super chat, Steven. Browns like franchise on the show coming soon? Maybe. I might do something like that on the, on the show. I know a lot more about what I'm doing in Madden than the show, but I think I'd like to do something with it on the second channel. Maybe a fantasy draft franchise of some kind. All right, 908 is what Gonzalez wants. Let's go. Let's go 900 for him. Andy Jones. I still have to figure out who he actually is. Five year, no thanks. That's a larger offer than I really wanted to make here. He's 30 years old. Maybe we let him go. <clears throat> Mitch Garver, our catcher, is a 74 overall. There we go. That's an easy one. Justin O'Connor. That should also be an easy one. Maybe not so much. He's a little bit older. He wants more money. He's a 74 overall, though. I'm going to go to four. I'm not sure what I should give to a player like O'Connor. Like 300? Yeah, this is the continuation of my last franchise. Willie Ordonez. I'm excited about him. I plan to get him some action at the major league level this year. 
He is looking for, I keep going past it here, 720. He is a 74 overall. Jake Reed was very good as a rookie for us. I'm not doing long-term deals on these players because if they eventually want more money and I'm not giving it to them, it's going to be a morale dip. And I just don't want to mess with that. All right, let's go to some of the cheaper ones. Tory Hunter Jr. Luin Diaz. Don't give him platoon. Who to Ordonez? If he goes back to the minors, he'll be upset. Well, I'm not planning on putting him there. I could offer him bench and then still play him as a platoon, and that would still be the same morale boost. But if it wouldn't hurt the contract negotiations, I'm probably better off doing that. So let me go back to Ordonez here. Depth. He'll probably uh, accept it anyway. And then I'll just play him as a platoon anyway. Now, Fowler will probably be at the major league level this time around. Trevor Hildenberger. Hopefully get a year out of him. John Ryan Murphy. We probably let him go. I like some of our catcher depth we have in the organization. I think he's a little bit older. Yeah, 27. I have other guys I'm developing. Tyler J. Let's bring him back. B potential on J. Luis Sardinius. I signed him just because we needed depth at one point. He is 25 years old. He's not bad at all. I should keep him around. Are we going to get gameplay or no? I'm not sure about that because the off seasons here can take a little bit of time. I'm not sure if we'll get into any spring training today. Quinton Berry. And there's Nick Gordon, one of our top prospects. I just wanted to see if it shows us our remaining budget, by the way. Like, our salaries right now are pretty good. We only have $34 million in salaries for this coming year because we just had so many free agents have expiring deals. The highest paid player right now is Jason Castro. a little bit older we're gonna let ryan strasberger test we want some players we can develop like angel vielma there we go and nick birdie felix jorge these ones are a lot less stressful eric ashley Chris Ryan sends a super chat. Sign Amari Cooper could be sold for the Twins. I'm not sure we could afford him. Just 
Still can't believe him. Oh, 31 years old. Who is Eric Ashley? C potential, first base, Wisconsin. See, some of the players in here got different names. Point two pitcher, come on now. Who is Thomas Gunn? C potential, twenty six overall. Uh, so many decisions to make here. We haven't even made the hard ones yet. Could be Kenny Vargas. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see Vargas' name on here. No, this wouldn't be Kenny Vargas. He's a switch hitter. Plus, I don't think it changes appearances when they bring uh when they change the names. I don't think they randomize the whole player. Hey, Carlos Rodriguez. Minor league deal for him. Alex Kirlaw. Ooh. Gonna cost us a bit more, but we know how good he can be. Johnny Sandoval. I like Johnny Sandoval. Wilmer Font. Maybe he won't uh, accept that offer. Lamont Wade. I'm not going to bring back Nico Goodrum at that price. Alan Buznitz. No. Blankenhorn. Sure. So many players in these organizations. Hopefully we can wrap this section up soon and start trying to negotiate with players that we don't already have. Josh Hart. Very fast, 23. Don't believe that's his actual name. We're gonna let Reginato test too, he's 29. All right, so let me see if there's anyone here that I forgot about. Gary Tadano we offered. Gonzalez we offered. Fowler, O'Connor, Garver, not Jones here. He's 30. I think we'll let him go. Ordonez, Hildenberger, Reed, Sardinius, Jay. We let John Ryan Murphy go. Chris Anderson, 26. No, I'll keep him. Let's keep Thomas Gunn if we can. Cole Stewart, that's an important one. He has high uh, potential. Aaron Sledgers, or Sleggers? I forget. I think it's Sleggers. Uznitz. I was going to let him go. Alright, so those are the tender contracts. We've taken care of those. 
Now we have our 40-man roster. We have to make sure we set. If we lose Andy Jones, that's fine. Um, salary arbitration. So we have Tyler Duffy, Ryan Presley, and A. Ray Adrianza. Presley, I'm not looking to bring back. He can go. That's fine. But Tyler Duffy, I do like. But I wonder what kind of an offer we'll have here. I don't want to make a super long-term offer here. I'd be cool going two years with Duffy. Um, this probably isn't going to be a really big deal. But he's a solid reliever. He'll be in the bullpen for sure. Two years, two and a half million. A. Ray Adrianza with B potential. I do want to keep him in the organization, but he is 29. So I'd be looking for a really short-term contract from him. Not Presley, though. What's up, Blackjack? How's it going? Alright. And now, we can start to take a look at actually signing free agents that are available. We now are in the offseason that allows us to really make something happen because we no longer have Joe Mauer under contract. We no longer have Urban Santana under contract. These are our highest paid players on the team. That's it. We have $34 million right now in player salary for 2019. Last year we had, I think, 92 93 I was in this menu today. So we have money to spend. Of course, for big contracts, they've got to be long-term commitments, but we can make something happen. I know I can make deals for guys past the age of 30, but I don't want to do it for a bunch of guys who aren't uh, going to develop anymore. If they're like in the low 70s, I'm going to pass. When did the game come out? It came out today if you pre-ordered. It comes out on Tuesday otherwise. By the way, I just want to see my 40-man roster here. This is the 40-man roster, which has some players that shouldn't be on here, but I didn't know what I was doing. We currently have 35 players on it. And I'll have to probably let some players go through waivers afterwards. I'm not too worried about it, though. Get Goldie. That would just be the ultimate power move for us to make. That contact and power, that would be such a boost to us. I'd love to make an offer for Paul Goldschmidt. I don't know what it would take, but this offer right here would be $100 million, $20 million a season. I think he gets a larger offer though. What if we go $22 million a year? He's already 31, but I'm sure he's going to be good for a long time. This is baseball. 27 Super Yankees says six years, $120 million. Put a player option at the end of the deal. It really helps. I thought about that. It would only boost things. Five years 120 is fair and you still have so much money yeah I don't know what all it's going to take I'm sure there's a lot of interest for him now he's not gonna make his decision right away right am I gonna be able to see what the other offers are this right here would be for 24 million dollars a season which I'm not sure what Maurer was making but 
it wasn't super far off. Oh, well, first of all, we have to we have to pass up what the Diamondbacks are offering per year, but we already have a better deal than the Diamondbacks offered. Don't you lose a first round pick if you sign a player with a qualifying offer? I'm not sure if it's the first round pick anymore or the third. I think someone in the chat said it was the third now. But other first basemen don't really compare to Paul Goldschmidt. Um, I would like to add a corner outfielder because I'm waiting for Rosario and Kepler to both be, you know, great players and neither have become that great player. I think if we were to sign anybody, we'd have to go after like Charlie Blackman and then move him to left field. Um, it might not even be that expensive. I could probably go on a shorter deal as well and that would add some speed to our lineup and another high average hitter. If I wanted to sign a starting pitcher, which I also have interest in, Dallas Keuchel's 31. We'd finally we have a veteran in there that could be a great player for us. Lance Lynn is available. And by the way, I'll show you what we currently have on our team. These are our starting pitchers, and our highest overall right now is Yadier Alvarez who was all over the place last year with an ERA near five. But he has very good ratings. He's developing. Then we have Steven Gonzalez, who is up there. Jose Barrios, we want to develop. And then at first base, Joe Maurer is our best, but I'm not looking to have him be the everyday first baseman anymore. We signed him to a just a small one-year deal. Nothing major. Bring Denard Span back. It's tempting. Then for our corner outfield spots, no great potentials here in left field besides DJ Stewart, who's 25 already with a 64 overall. Then in right, there's Alex Kirloff, but... You know, there's not that guy that I think becomes a superstar in the corner. We definitely need some outfield help. By the way, where are my rookies I drafted? I want to see them as a part of this. I probably can't see them until after free agency. Now, what would happen if I signed two players that had signed their qualifying offer? Because that could be a problem, right? Bring in Carlos Gonzalez, that's an option. I didn't, I wasn't sure if I saw him. Robbie Grossman hits the open market again. That's cool. We can move on from him as a DH. Wasn't that great for us. Josh Harrison can play everything. He would be a really fun player to sign. 7.6 he's 31 years old even for a couple of years Josh Harrison would be a good boost you lose your next highest draft pick so a third and a fourth okay when it says qualified it doesn't mean the offer was tendered it means they could have okay let's see then qualifying offer made okay not everybody had the offer actually made to them. So if we want to go after Dallas Keuchel, there's the opportunity. There's also Drew Pomeranz, Cole Hamels. But Dallas Keuchel would be a really big move for us. But those would have to be like our two big moves.
You can offer 15 year contracts? This would take a lot of money. And he wants to be the ace. Well, he would be if we signed him. That's for sure. Lance Lynn would be a solid option for us to add, who they just added in real life. I would like to add a veteran like him, just because look how young our rotation is. It's going to be really tough for us to have stability. All these guys had like ERAs in the fives. I don't want it to be all young guys. And if we're going to make the playoffs next year, we need someone like Dallas Keiko, I think. So let's make an offer. How's that? 76 over 5 makes it $15 million a year. I'll just make that offer for now. And I'm also going to offer to Lance Lynn. That's just a solid veteran that we could sign for a short time that would I think give us a couple years of good innings. Let's go two years, 9.2, just to be part of the rotation, add some stability. Any relief pitchers? Sean Doolittle's good. Closers, Kelvin Herrera. What does a top end closer get? 8.3 a year. Dallas Keuchel, five years, 77 and a half with an option. I should throw in the option. Because the way I look at it, we're replacing two large contracts with maybe two large contracts. It's not exactly a one-to-one -one deal. These are bigger deals. But it's not like we weren't already paying some big contracts to players. All right, then, here, some relievers. Might be tough to add some great relief help this year. What's our situation now on the roster? Buddy Boshears, Trevor May, Tyler Duffy. It is a little weak there. That's honestly not that expensive for Doolittle. Give him a player option at the end of it. He could be our closer. Six million a year? That's reasonable. Perkins had a nice contract too that we're replacing. What about Fernando Abad? He might not be a bad option for us to bring back either. That'd be super cheap. Just a one-year contract trying to buy time for other players to get better. Gomez ain't Gomez anymore with 79 speed. That's sad. He 
There will be a lot of MLB on the channel this week. A lot of this series. What would Nelson Cruz be for a year? Oh yeah, I'd totally do that for a year. Just add some serious power to the team. Let's make the offer on Nelson Cruz. We're trying to go to the playoffs this year. Blackman? Yeah, there's Charlie Blackman. This is our year to spend. We have so much room. And Blackman isn't even that expensive. Four years, player option, wouldn't hurt us for the future that badly. And he would bring contact, high average play to the team. Four years, 40 million, Charlie Blackman. So do we still keep the offer out for Nelson Cruz then? It's not that expensive. Don't sign qualified players. But they weren't all offered qualifying deals. My qualifying offer made here. Like Goldschmidt and Keiko, you can see their offers from their original teams. Okay, I guess you can see offers for other players as well. Huh. Blackman didn't have an offer, so that one's a little bit easier to manage. Let me make sure then. Can I just see my offers out there? No. If we lose a couple picks from Goldschmidt and Keiko, it's worth it. Blackman wouldn't be anything. Doolittle, I think we don't have a choice for a bullpen like ours. We don't have a choice but to go after him. But we wouldn't need to force Nelson Cruz if he had an offer, but he doesn't. Don't sign Cruz, he will go down. I'm not sure I want to have both corner spots filled like that. But let's see here. I'm trying to think about our team right now and who's going to DH. Um, our lineups. This would be our lineup right now. So Noah would be DHing. Escobar at third. Polanco at short. I can always move Sano to third, his natural position. Escobar to short. Polanco to second and open up our DH for a player like Nelson Cruz. David Guerra sends a super chat. Hello, Tim. What I miss? Also, your opinion on Cubs. You haven't missed too much yet. I'm just making offers. Big offers right now. I haven't signed anybody yet. My opinion on the Cubs? I think they're a really good team, and they have an outstanding core. Like, Cruz could be our DH, then, with what I was saying earlier. Teams can still offer qualified players long-term contracts. But if they still offer and they win, then I don't give up anything. They still have to make an offer for that to matter. I don't know about Cruz. I'll withdraw the offer for now. That's serious power, though. It'd be so helpful. I don't want to replace all of these starting spots. If we get Goldschmidt, that's one. If we get Blackman, that's two. Josh Harrison would also be nice. I'd rather have Harrison over him, easily. Just because of, I think, Harrison be a better player longer and maybe still get a little bit better. Harrison is 31, though, so I wouldn't want to give him another long-term deal just because 
the upside. Like, he's 31. He's probably a finished product here. But 7.6 million is not unreasonable. What if we do with three years and a player option at like 22 million? That looks pretty good. That would give us a new second baseman, a new first baseman, and a new outfielder if we got all those deals done. Plus a new ace, a new bullpen arm. We have 80 million right now in pending offers. That wouldn't be 80. That's like, is that? I think that's this year, right? From all the offers I've made to my own free agents and everything. <sighs> that would raise our uh, payroll quite a bit. Why give him an option? Just so that he's more likely to sign. Give him some control over the contract. Have a backup plan for Goldie? We do, and that's Willie Ordonez and Joe Maurer. We're set at first base there. I can move Ordonez, I think, elsewhere. Um, I want to know what Ordonez is good at. He can also play third or left. So we can move Ordonez into the outfield and then trade like Rosario or Kepler. So Ordonez, he's probably not going to be a first baseman. If we uh, get Paul Goldschmidt, he definitely won't be. The Robo Buck sends a super chat. What does the future hold for Jordan Starks? Well, I'm going to pay or I'm going to play uh, Jordan tomorrow on MLB 18. So I'm not 100% sure yet. Gold about to pull an Amari Cooper. Oh no, I can't have this happen again. That's like 2.5 million in cash flow gone. Not bad at all. Yeah, I feel like we're in a good spot financially, and me making all these offers actually doesn't hurt us. Just because of how many contracts now we're not paying. We have no bad contracts on this team. Unless you call Jason Castro's bad, which I'll allow you to. But again, he's done after this year. We have no money being spent right now. We are in such a good spot. We might end up giving a couple picks away if we get some signings done. I'm not too concerned about it though. I might like Pollock better than Blackman. Thirty-one, thirty-two. But, Pollock had a qualifying offer. I also like that batting clutch a lot for Charlie Blackman. I'll stick with Blackman. I offered a Josh Harrison. That could be an awesome signing for us. I wouldn't be against Hunter Pence if we don't land uh, Blackman. I think I'm ready to sim to like the next day or two. What do y'all think? See if we get some deals done here. Pollock didn't get a qualifying offer. They only got a qualifying offer if it says they got an offer like Goldie and Harvey. Okay. 
He has an offer, but it's not a qualifying offer then. Okay. I still like uh, Blackman's uh, secondary batting ratings more. Thank you all for being patient. This is something I'm not all that familiar with, so it does take some time for me. Thank you for to Sim. I've made good offers, competitive offers. Let's go. Let's go! Paul Goldschmidt is a Minnesota twin. Five years, $108.6 million. Amari Cooper is the only one to ruin my stream, not Goldschmidt. Let's go. We just added maybe the best first baseman in the game. Dallas Keuchel, also to the Minnesota Twins. What a splash. And that's all for now. That is exciting. We still have the best offer out there for Sean Doolittle. We have the only offer out there for Charlie Blackman. What about Josh Harrison? I think Harrison shows somebody else. Let's, uh, where do they show? I think it's in calendar. Transactions. Oh, we also signed uh, some of our other players in our farm system. Here's the free agent signings. Oh, wait. We got Josh Harrison as well. It just didn't show it earlier. We got Harrison. What an upgrade. We get Paul Goldschmidt, Dallas Keuchel, Josh Harrison, and we're not done. We also got Fernando Abad. Yankees signed Devin Mezzarocco. Wait a minute. Do they not have Gary Sanchez in here? Kelvin Herrera to the Cubs. Sean Doolittle chose the Yankees. I should have checked to see if he, uh, if they had a new offer out there. Oh man, I could have easily topped that offer. I simmed one too many days. My bad. What about uh Charlie Blackman? Like now I, I think I ruined my bullpen a little bit by not fixing that. That's my bad. 27 Super Yankee sends a super chat. Next time you complain about a team like the Yankees spending lots of money, you better look back and realize that you did it even if it's a video game. <laughs> I had to. Well, we still might be pretty low in terms of our overall um, spending. But yeah, I had to take some players. We signed Lance Lynn. I didn't just sign him because he was signed in real life. It actually fit what I was looking for. We signed Charlie Blackman. There we go. We got Blackman. We got almost everyone I offered to but one. And that's because I messed up. Sean Doolittle goes to the Yankees. I probably have to trade for a closer.
Allow me to save quick. I don't want this game to crash and lose Goldie. Still got a ways to go in fully downloading MLB the show, so playing Uncharted 4 in the meantime. Uncharted 4 was awesome. It's almost been two years since I played it, so I uh, I want to play it again this year. Read for closer? He might be able to fill that role, but I feel like we still need a couple higher overall players. There's also the option to bring back Glenn Perkins. So our cash flow is still in a really good spot. <clears throat> so our budget this year now climbs to $101 million. That's pretty significant. The top three played the top three paid players on the team were all just signed. And then there's Josh Harrison, two names down, then Lance Lynn, two names down from there. Our salaries are already higher than last year. But we had room, I think, to spend more and weren't. Yeah, Perkins ain't going to cut it this year. Might have to make a trade. Yep, I'll edit Blackman to his primary position. Don't worry about that. Seeing if there's any value here that I want to offer... I'm probably set though. We have a brand new ace. We have a brand new first baseman. I can't wait. This guy's pretty good for a 63. He's fast and hits for contact with decent plate vision. I don't care if he has deep potential. I think he's good enough. Well, that means he probably won't get better. I still think he's decent. I want that kind of a player in my farm system. I did open up some farm system spots, so I'm going to make some signings. Carter Simmons is 19. Can I get some C potential though? <clears throat> I know this is already taking a long time. I'll try to speed some of this up. I think we're ready to go on to the next, uh, dates though AJ Pollock finally signed with the Angels I want to see my tendered offers here most of them have been signed thankfully but these are all the players I didn't want to bring back well I don't want to let Rogers go for free 800k 28 years old well it's not gonna be that expensive I'll make a small offer did I not offer to Duffy or he hasn't accepted yet if I offer arbitration, it's probably not that uh, risky, right? Who are your coaches? Um, I can show that afterwards. I have good coaching staff, though. 
leave room for rule five drafts you might be able to upgrade the bullpen there yeah i'm hope i have uh i'll see if i have open spots on the 40 man if not i'll make one i'm just wondering if arbitration here is probably fair there probably won't be an amazing offer for duffy right but we gotta keep tyler duffy he's been solid and our bullpen isn't exactly you know lo loaded or anything Thank you all for helping me out today. This offseason has gone by so much smoother than last time, that's for sure. If you offer arbitration, you're giving him a one-year deal. I'm okay with that. Although I thought I offered a very fair contract. What's his expectation, anyway? 1.3 his morale is down because he isn't getting paid 0k a rule 5 player has to be on the 25 man roster the whole season not the 40 man well that's why I'd only sign a bullpen member that we would actually use did you like Joe Nathan I love Joe Nathan he was an excellent twin I have his autograph too I can't find the baseball though. I have a bunch of autographs on one baseball and I'm not sure where it is because I moved uh, last year and who knows where it is. The same baseball probably has Guardy's autograph and a few others. Anyway. Here with Mr. Tyler Duffy. Yeah, he's got three years of arbitration eligibility. Like, why isn't he liking my offer? When's spring training going to be? I'm not sure, but there's going to be a lot of MLB this week, so there's not going to be any shortage of content from this series. It's going to get a, the emphasis this week. We're just getting started now. Two and a half over two makes it a one and a quarter per year. He's looking for 1.9. We're looking for 1.4. He keeps changing on me. One point three. So if I go two point six, he should like it. Let's sim one more day and see if he accepts it. Not yet. Here, just take this offer and accept it, Tyler. Try this off for him arbitration. I feel like I don't want to lose him. My offer. I'll make a $1.5 million offer. Are the arbitration hearings in February? I thought, okay, my deadline isn't actually... Uh, that far or, what, or isn't actually soon my bad yes yeah, stop simulating I have to set my 40 man roster here we currently have it looks like 41 on the uh, 40 man roster which isn't exactly legal so let's go to my 40 man and I'll have to wave a couple Lower rated players like Nico Goodrum, I don't even want anymore. So we can remove him, pass him through waivers. Um, 
Darren Blum. I'm not sure who he is actually, but let me just clear out my 40 man here from players that I'm okay sending through waivers. Um, Quinton Berry, if you want to claim him, go ahead. Luis Sardinius, same deal. So that opens up some of our 40-man roster spots right there, and I'm not going to be signing, you know, like three players. Taylor Rogers, I don't want him on the 40-man either. And, you know, losing someone in the Rule 5 draft, it requires them to be on the 25-man roster all year, so you're not going to really lose players often. But if you are hoarding players, then that's kind of just a balanced thing the MLB does. Okay, so I offered arbitration. We couldn't get a deal done. At least I still have that then for uh, Tyler Duffy. Any timeline for more Super Mega Baseball? Uh, not sure about that yet. I'm still waiting on the next Super Mega Baseball to come out. And right now with MLB being fresh, I'm focusing on baseball quite a lot. I have to release some players here. I have too many players in my organization. Sign too many. I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna be on the hook for some of this money. Most of it's not very expensive, though. I'm not worried about it. I don't want to release Tory Hunter Jr. He has C potential at least. He's young. That should give me 89 players on the roster. Or that gives me 90 now, it says. I need to open up a spot in case I want to make a signing. Wait a minute. Is this still including the players that haven't actually had their contract expire yet? Like Presley, I didn't want to bring back. Has my rookies on here now. Carmen Ojeda. I wasn't looking to bring back Eric Ashley. So yeah, I'm not worried about that roster then. That probably cost me like, you know, probably a quarter million dollars that just cost me. Because I'm not going to be bringing back um, any of these players. No offers. So that'll open up my roster spots again. When is the Rule 5 draft, by the way? Okay, it's all the way in December there, so I'm not worried about it then. Cut all the players who didn't resign. Notice we come free agents now, correct? So now we're past that stage, and I should have some more openings on the roster. I have 83 players, like I expected. So now I need to sign some new minor leaguers for later. So here's what our uh, team looks like now with 
Paul Goldschmidt there at the very top. We signed, this is amazing, baseball, you can make four impact signings the players who are all over 30 years old. And that's exactly what we did. Four out of our five best players overall were just signed in this live stream. Paul Goldschmidt, that's huge. Dallas Keuchel, Charlie Blackman, and Josh Harrison. Now for Goldschmidt, what he do last year with the Diamondbacks? Oh, nothing, just 322 average, hit 38 bombs with 110 RBIs and stole 13 bases. He's from Delaware, huh? I guess between him and Joe Flacco. They're making that state pretty proud. I'm not even sure where Flacco is from, but... It's hard to think that a, a top, like, obviously Flacco is a first-round pick. Just a first-round quarterback from Delaware it doesn't even compute to me. I don't think I followed the draft very closely when he was drafted. Winter meetings. That was fun. Rule 5 draft. I'm making sure nothing happened to my 40-man roster. It is good. 35 players are on it. Let's do the Rule 5 draft then. No one's been selected. That's it? That's... That's all? Three players are Rule 5 eligible? All that for this? Chris Sanchez ain't bad, though. You gotta admit, Chris Sanchez ain't bad. But keeping him on the 25-man roster all year, it's a little iffy. Flacco's a Jersey boy. Oh, okay. I don't think Flacco makes anyone proud. <laughs> oh, man. Chris Sanchez. Power hitting, speedster, low contact, though. He's a minor league talent. He's not a major league talent. He's wearing a San Antonio Missions uniform, and they're a double-A squad. And that was the Rule 5 Draft. I hope you enjoyed it. There are our positions right now, and consider I haven't exactly finished moving things around. Like, shortstop, I don't think will be 25th, because we're going to play probably Miguel Sano at either DH or third, and then move Yunel Escobar, and we're going to have Josh Harrison in second base, and uh, Josh, or, uh, Charlie Blackman's going to take over our corner outfield spot. The bullpen is the main concern. So maybe I can put a player out there and see what we get for an offer. With us getting Josh Harrison, you know, that might make one of our middle infielders expendable. We could try offering up Jorge Polanco or Nick Gordon. Harrison's everyday second base, but then that would be sacrificing some of the youth we do have. And our offensive youth is not deep. What I could do, though is offer up either Rosario or Kepler. I like both players. They're really similar here in terms of ratings, but it looks like Rosario has better overall hitting. 27 to 26 in age. Worst Rule 5 draft ever. I thought it was pretty good. It was kind of exciting. It was quick. Yeah, I probably can't trade Nick Gordon, 23 years old, 8 potential. Could consider it with Polanco, but definitely one of these corner spots now. Because if you think about it too, these guys are going to have the 
they expect to be part of the lineup. Well, Rosario wants to be a platoon player. Kepler also wants platoon, so maybe it's not that bad. But I could trade one of them. Last year in the series, <clears throat> Kepler hit 235 with 19 home runs, 71 RBIs. That led the team, actually. And Rosario hit 17 home runs, 58 RBIs, and he hit 230. These players are just too equal. They're both left handed. The biggest difference is Rosario throws righty. But their ratings are just ridiculous. But let's just gauge offers. Play Buckholtz. What's okay? I need a relief pitcher. Jose Bautista. Wow. Joe Smith. Who's Joe Smith? Is he like a generic created character? Because that is what I'm looking for. Just a little bit of stability here. I think Joe Smith could be our closer. He did it 40 times two years ago. What you know about Joe Smith? Although it would be us taking on a bit more salary too. Keep that in mind. For one year, not a big deal. What's Kepler got for a contract? This is a larger contract. Takes them all the way to free agency. So there's the Joe Smith deal. I love this trade suggest feature. It's okay if he declines as long as he doesn't decline in one year. I'll probably have to go back and offer it to them, but uh, yeah, it changes up some offers here. But even for just one year, I think it'd be worth it. Ooh. Wait a minute here. Wait a minute here. Tim Collins. Seventy-nine overall with B potential. He has incredible break. Gets a lot of strikeouts. He's got two point seven million dollars a year as his contract. That one's pretty tempting right there. What does everyone think about Tim Collins? He'd like to be close to home. Massachusetts is home. Minnesota's close. It's only a plane right away, right? I don't have to make the trade right now either. But uh there could be a that could be our best way of uh strengthening our bullpen though. Look for closing pitcher, not relief pitcher. Closers are different than relief pitchers for simulation. Well what if I trade change his position? Let's see what they'll offer for Kepler. I never offered up him. Hmm. 
There's Joe Smith and Marwin Gonzalez. Not a bad offer. Well, I'm not going to trade in division, but that older players is interesting. 6.7 in salary. Danny Duffy. Clutch stat is huge for closers. They want to trade us Adam McDonough, who's Glenn Perkins, but I didn't, uh, you know, he, he had his name changed when the, I transferred the file over. Texas wants to give us, a, give us a bunch of pitchers. Marwin is the ultimate utility guy. I feel like we could use a player like that. So that's a tempting offer then. Addison Reed. I don't think I'd want Bruce and Santos though. I'd rather just take cash. I'm not sure you can do cash considerations. Like, I've already added Lance Lynn like the Twins did in real life, and now Addison Reed could make sense. And I'm not, I wouldn't be forcing it because the Twins actually made those moves, but I don't want to take on all that extra salary. Yeah, they do sometimes do in-division trades in baseball, but I think it's usually more so like, we're terrible, we're, we know we're not competing with you, so here you go. This is our first uh, pick from last year's draft, Carmen Ojeda, 21 years old. I think he has a high C potential, like it does have a letter grade, but also has a number attached to it. And I think his is a 79. You already have a utility guy in Harrison. Yeah, that's that's one utility guy. But if he just if I get another one in addition to uh, a relief pitcher in one trade. All right. So Rosario is a 74 and Kepler is a 79. So obviously we're going to get more for Kepler. He's a higher overall and he's younger. Rosario, I think, has superior ratings for hitting. Kepler has more power off of righties, but higher contact for Rosario. And I've had no problems hitting home runs with him. He had 17 and 24 in this series compared to Kepler having 19 and 18. So again, if we put Kepler out there as an offer, MLB ready offers. Who made that offer again? Well, the Blue Jays changed up their offer on me now, but I can obviously just uh, edit it. Which team was it that was offering us the uh, B potential closer or the reliever? I at least want to see his ratings again. It was Tim Collins. His clutch is 69. So yeah, probably not my closer then. So it's a 69 clutch for Collins, and then from the Blue Jays, what was the clutch on their reliever? It was Joe Smith with 69 clutch. So are we thinking that neither would be the ideal closer? Yeah, let's just get Roberto Osuna and call it good. 84 clutch for him. Yeah. 
Go back to Reed, Addison Reed. I forget where Addison Reed even was in here. I missed on Doolittle so badly. He went to a team already has a good bullpen too. Well, I'm not sure about this game. In real life, they obviously have a pretty nasty bullpen. Reed is a good closer. Yeah, if Reed fit that role, I'd like to trade for him, I think. So overall, our salaries aren't going up tremendously this year at all. Maybe 10 million? Those Mets? Addison Reed has 73 clutch. Had a very good season a year ago. Has been a closer for a few years. And that's three and a half million and he signed for four years. We could go straight up for Max Kepler. Or we could offer to the Blue Jays Joe Smith, plus maybe a little bit extra. Smith would be just a one year fix, though. There wouldn't be any uh, long term solution there. Could you at least explain why you won't field offers for Bucks? Then I can see what's there, but I'm still being patient, and if I do want to trade him, it's not going to be now. Like, if eventually Buxton can't, like, really turn the corner for us, I would consider it. But I'm still going to be patient, like, he's not getting traded this year or anything. Yeah, I'm sure we could get a really good deal for him now. But I'm definitely playing the long game with him. The Red Sox have two good closers. What would it take to get Iglesias from them? Let's go reverse trade finder. Kepler, Lynn, Vargas. Would be expensive then. But what if I made it Kepler and a prospect? What about Kepler and Adalberto Mejia? No, that wouldn't be quite enough, but we're close there. Tebow? There's no Tebow in my game. I don't. We checked last time, I'm pretty sure. By the way, I just want to see... Uh, I was ready to back out of that menu entirely. Uh, on Iglesias there, who'd be a really nice get for us at this point. 82 overall and only 29. Uh, and on a really team-friendly contract. He would want a new contract, though. And that's taking away his morale. He could be an 85 overall, but morale is just ruining it. Probably still a good uh, player for us to go and sign, right? Or 
trade for. Could I redo his deal at some point too to make him happier? be more than an 85 if you make him happy that's a good way of putting it Ooh, Garver is a 74 and so is O'Connor O'Connor might be able to actually go up to the major league level this year Yeah, I've got to end up with Iglesias, though. I think that really fix our uh, closing position for a while. Adalberto Mejia is one of our lower B prospects here. I think if I just throw in somebody else that we can get this done. There's Randy Metcalf. C potential right fielder. All right, there's the deal right there. We'd actually save money by doing this. Of course, I have to go then find some other, uh, you know, minor league players. But, yeah, we give up Max Kepler because we know we're going to have Charlie Blackman take over one of the corners. And then Adalberto Mejia. We have other pitchers in our organization that are going to develop, I think. And he was the lowest overall of the B potentials. There's still Cole Stewart who's younger, and there's Barrios, Tadano, Fowler, Gonzalez, Alvarez. I think we're good there. So what do we think about this deal here? Kepler, Mejia, Metcalf for Rasiel Iglesias, who would immediately give us a boost at the closing position, which he did well with uh, Cincinnati that one year, as we can see. chat like this deal i am waiting for a lot of feedback in this just because i'm not as familiar with the off season here let's make the deal there we go there's my first trade of mlb the show 18 another upgrade for our roster now a brand new closer rasiel iglesias b potential 82 overall Every day, Eddie. Oh, man. I loved Eddie Guardado growing up. He was such a good closer. Those, like, early to mid-2000s Twins teams are so special to me. Hey, Nationals want to offer us a trade. Sean Kelly for Lance Lynn and Angel Vielma. Sean Kelly is an 80 overall reliever. He'd be a nice boost for us, but I don't want to go up Lance Lynn. If I do make another trade, I'm going to decide who I want to give up. Thanks for offering, though. This team has gotten a lot better, though, in this offseason. It's been fun. How did you transfer the franchise? It's very simple. Once you get in, uh, it says you can continue a franchise from MLB The Show 17. All right, now we're in late February. And uh, I think we're about ready to get started then. Or get on uh, with spring training, which I'm not looking to do tonight. It's already been almost two hours of, with this stream.
Did we get our arbitration uh, signing? All transactions. I just want to know if we got, uh, you know, Duffy back. Because he's actually pretty important to me. And this team on here. I know I offered, so they're going to give him something. And now we're on, we're in spring training. We've arrived. There's one of the new screens right there, seeing Fernando Romero against Chris Sale. No, Romero is not our ace. I just need to see if I kept Duffy. I did. What was it at? He actually ended up signing the two-year deal after all of that. He finally signed the deal. So let's just start setting our preliminary rotation here then. Obviously, Dallas Keuchel immediately becomes the ace. That's without a doubt. Lance Lynn, another veteran to strengthen the overall rotation. But then we have a few young guys who all kind of had weird years last year. Oh, Jose Barrios. Did his overall go up? I saw 69 for a long time, and now it says 74. Because he's happy, it's a 74, even though I'm paying him a little bit less. But I'm just setting our lineup right now. I want to get Max in there. And then another lefty. Let's go Gonzalez. We're going to figure out our rotation for this year. But this is what I'm going with for now. Getting our top 50 prospect, Maxwell Fowler, may be ready for um, the active roster. But signing the veterans now, that does make it a little bit more iffy if he's going to be on the uh, active roster right away. Why is he unhappy? Just because of one thing? If we go to our lineups now and start to build the new one, can I just like, is there like a quick edit here? I don't think so. Just to build it. Because obviously, Paul Goldschmidt's got to get in there at first base. Charlie Blackman, I need to move his position, obviously. And I'll just naturally put him over in right field. I'm excited to get this team in action now in year three. This is a really fun roster. This is one of the splashiest free agencies I've ever had on my channel. What position is this? Right field. That's obviously Charlie Blackman's new job. So consider our new starting lineup. We have Buxton lead off. Go into Goldschmidt into Sano and then you wonder if we should go get another power bat of some sort oh actually I forgot to put Josh Harrison in the game come on now we have some good contact now with this lineup Buxton's gotta earn this leadoff role again I think Buxton's overall and his stuff went up 92 speed, 61 contact, 64 power. A lot of people want me to sign Cruz. Um, let me see my overall budget. We're at $104 million. Not too bad. And our cash flow is still very, very good. I think Cruz will make sense. Just to get us a cleanup hitting DH. Nelson Cruz, one year. Every day.
Come on, Nelson. He won't take anything less than 6.2. Nelson Cruz has been signed to the Minnesota Twins. What a revamped roster we have now. So let me uh, move this around. That makes Miguel Sano our third baseman again because we want Cruz to DH. If he has to play any defense, it'll be in the outfield, obviously. Um, but let's move Escobar to short. And then that makes Jorge Polanco a bench player. So we go Buxton, Goldschmidt, Sano, Cruz... Harrison doesn't have much power. Blackman does have some. We could go... Where's Escobar hit now? This lineup is looking pretty good. Oh, man. Where do you put Yunel Escobar after all this? I think Buxton has to go down until he shows he should be leading off again. So if we start with Escobar, or maybe Blackman leads off for the Rockies. What if we go Blackman here because he does have decent speed. Blackman, Goldschmidt, Sano, Cruz. And then we go Rosario, Harrison, Escobar, Castro, Buxton. Or we have Sano bat 4th and Cruz bat 5th. We can move everyone down here. A slot. And go Blackman, Escobar. That's a lot of righties in a row. Don't have Cruz cleanup versus righties. His contact won't be as good. I don't have to decide on all this right now either. But I just wanted to get like a mock lineup so I have something to look forward to with spring training. And that lineup is scary. We did not have a good offense last year. This year, you better watch out. We're going to hit some home runs this year. I know that. So... If those are our starters this year, let's talk about what our bench is going to look like. Because these are the players I want to start for sure. So then consider what our bench will have. I think Joe Maurer as the backup first baseman. No other secondary positions. I think Eduardo Escobar for just utility player. Can do all sorts of stuff. But there's Willie Ordonez, and he might actually, like, kick Maurer out of this spot. Or I have Ordonez play at AAA and just tear it up there, and he maybe goes up a little bit overall. For... And there's Jorge Polanco. He's obviously going to be a good bench player. For backup outfield spots, then, we would keep Daniel Palka here. I'm not sure about our other outfield spots. Might have to be... Ordonez can play left. That's one spot. Then there's Zach Granite who can play center and left. If Gordon has a good spring, is there a chance he starts and Harrison moves to the outfield? Sure. But I just don't see Nick Gordon showing enough offense yet. But as we see here, it looks like Nick Gordon's ratings are going up. I don't think his contact was this good when we last checked in on him. I could be wrong. I could also fire up MLB 17 and just compare the ratings directly, which I think I'll do. 
But man, you gotta feel good about this roster now. We made big moves. And then the pitching rotation, obviously Keichel, Lynn, Alvarez, Fowler, Gonzalez, and Rossiel Iglesias becomes the closer. Buddy Boshears is still the setup man. Get Gary Tadano out of there. He's a starter. Tyler Duffy, long relief. Fernando Romero is a starter. Jose Barrios. Now, suddenly, by getting Dallas Keuchel, I think that does make it a little bit easier for us to consider trading a starting pitcher prospect at some point because I would have to think Keuchel and Fowler are guaranteed long-term options. Alvarez, Gonzalez, Barrios, Romero. You need three there to work out. And did I include Gonzalez there? Gonzalez, Romero, Barrios, and Alvarez. Yeah. You need three of those to work out. Someone could be the odd man out and potential trade option. If we had to do that, like right now, I'm not sure what I'd trade for. Another bullpen arm? Sure. But now we're not really in a position, I think, to really buy or sell. And then for players who could be on the rise in the organization, let's go, let's sort by youngest. Obviously Max, Gary Tadano. I forgot all about him. Tadano could be really good. He's already a 76 overall. Sandy Bunty is actually a good reliever, and we need some good relievers in our system. And we have, I think, two or three. Bunty, and then... Tyler J, who's 25. Taylor Rogers is just so far away. So yeah, we have a couple good relief arms there. Um, Andres Valdez, I'm not sure who this is supposed to be. That's not the right name. But that's another one that could be really good. Like this team has some pretty good structure now. What was his record last year? 84 and 78. Yes. We were just out of the wild card uh, standings, like one or two games. Could look for a better catcher? I mean, I could. But I have 27 year old Justin O'Connor here I'm trying to develop. And I think with him and Garver having comparable ratings, I want Justin O'Connor to win this backup job in the spring training. And Garver's not on the 40 man. I might put him on the 40 man. We only have 36 players there right now. Best player not on the 40 man would be Mitch Garver. So there you go. I'll probably add him. Well, I have to if I want him to play at spring training, correct? I can't play with him there otherwise because I do want to get him some at-bats. So yeah, let's throw him on the 40, man. That way I can move him up to majors. What's his option situation? None, okay. I've got to get him some playing time. So we have a backup catcher competition. It's gonna be fun, right? This team should make the playoffs in my opinion. I think that there's a good chance of that, right? We now have one of the best first basemen, already had one of the best third basemen, a great right fielder, a maybe a future superstar in Byron Buxton holding down center. Um, they're underrating Yunel Escobar at short. I'm not even sure if they're grabbing his rating right there. Uh, and left, it's Eddie Rosario. He's pretty good, but it says 23rd. I like this team. What's the goal this year, by the way? Finish over 500 again? Well, that's the expectation every year. But the postseason is what we hope we can do this year. What would make Justin O'Connor happy? Oh, that money. Uh, 
All right, so that was our big off season, everybody. Oh, and someone wanted to see the coaches. These are my coaches. We have a very good coaching staff. They're all A. I have not been cheap on the staff. Their uh, salaries combined to be almost 19 mil. That's one way I wanted to give us a competitive advantage because we can't spend as much as other teams. So let's spend on coaching because that's going to help the entire team in a big way. Uh, we were able to spend some money, though, because we just didn't have any big contracts this year, and we, uh, I think, made the most of that money. We now have a, a payroll of $111 million. And we're still very good in terms of our cash flow. Our goal this year is to at least make it to the wild card round, but I want to win the division. You should always set your sights on winning the division, and I think we have a roster now that gives us a great chance to do that. Trade for Judge. I'm not sure how good Judge is on this game because these are my 2017 rosters. Like, I started out when he wasn't a superstar yet. So Aaron Judge... He hasn't developed yet. This is Aaron Judge before he became Aaron Judge. He could still become that, but it's going to take time in this series. They do have him at A potential, but I mean, certainly in real life, he's probably a 92 instead of a 72. So, okay. Now, I know a lot of you want to see some action. I'm already streaming a lot longer than I wanted to tonight. But I will be doing a lot more MLB over the weekend and next week. I'm hoping that I can stream some spring training with you on Sunday. Not tomorrow, but Sunday. I'm going to be doing the edited off-season now of this episode. I'm going to be doing some other content on the show. But what a way to kick off this year. Day one, and we just go and make the biggest moves that we've made in this series. I've been hyping up this 2018 offseason, and now we've seen what it's brought us. So thank you all for joining the stream today and spending some time with me. I really appreciate it. It was a fun stream. I know it took a long time to really get anywhere, but that's because I'm very new to the show and how the offseasons work, so I didn't want to make as many mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes last time. This year, there was only one that really stands out, and that was not checking the offer for the reliever Sean Doolittle after uh, a couple days, and I let the Yankees pass us up. Well, that's going to do it for today. Thank you all for spending some time here. Please leave a like. Those are much appreciated. Also, subscribe to the channel so you can enjoy the Minnesota Twins franchise. It's going to be a fun year, and you certainly don't want to miss it. I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.